department i will be taking the topic of surveying and leveling uh, i will be moving on to from my earlier lecture of uh, surveying and leveling basic concepts uh, to i will be moving on to the contouring so we have covered the topics of basic principles uh, the different types of levels uh, and the balancing of uh, dumpy levels as well as reciprocal leveling in our earlier lecture today we will be moving on to contouring uh, what is contour definitions characteristics contour intervals uh, then we will be looking at what are the different characteristics of contours and we will also be looking at the direct and indirect methods of contouring so what we will be covering in this uh, the what outcome we are expected to achieve is that uh, after we have learned the basic surveying and leveling methods how to apply this for the contouring methods okay now look at this sketch here you see a uh, two dimensional figure on the bottom and a three dimensional figure at the top so this is the three dimensional figure which is depicted on a two dimensional paper uh, by the use of contours so what the values which you see here 10 20 30 these are contours so contours are shown on a two dimensional paper this will not be available in a contour map this is just for your uh, reference moving on so what we are going to learn in the subtopic today we will be learning about basic definitions inter contour interval characteristics methods interpolation techniques and the applications of contour maps so what is a contour line it is an imaginary line on the ground surface joining points of equal elevation so when we uh, when we say contours we mean that these are the these are the lines drawn on, drawn on a uh, two dimensional map which depict which show the elevations of the same heights are same elevations uh, uh, points are joint here so basically it means the intersection of the level surface with the ground surface it can also be defined as a line passing through points of equal reduced levels or elevations that is what we mean so it is basically a science representing a ver the third the third dimension of uh, vertical height of the terrain on a two dimensional paper this facilitates the depiction of the relief so what is meant by relief it means the height variations can be seen of the terrain on a two dimensional map so general map of a country includes roads railways rivers village etc but the nature of the ground surface cannot be realized from such a map so however all engineering projects like roads whatever when you talk about civil engineering works we require the all the civil engineering works so they require that the contour has to be prepared a contour map is generally required for everything so that the third dimension can be understood for uh, for the purpose of uh, locating the alignment for estimating volume of earthwork etc so now uh, we move on to understand what is a contour interval so contour interval is an is a uh, terminology to uh, to understand that a contour line uh, by itself one line is itself is not sufficient to draw a contour map but a series of uh, consecutive lines like 98 99 100 values which you see here a series of uh, lines are required and the difference between these two lines uh, on a two dimensional paper uh, the values between this uh, difference is called as a contour interval so here you can see that the contour interval is 1 meter so basically it means the vertical difference between the two points 98 and 99 99 and 100 in the elevation although in a contour map the sectional elevation or elevations are not drawn so that's what has been uh, shown here so why the contour maps are used they are used to show the ground surface they are used to show the alignment they are used to show calculate the capacity of reservoir they are used to show the gradient of a route they are used to show section of the ground surface and as i mentioned earlier for the volume of earthwork calculations now we start with the different characteristics or features what when we say characteristics we mean that what can, what are the things which a contour maps can show a contour maps can show different features topography or terrain of the ground like for example here you can see that there is a hill so what is a hill a hill is a uh, contour map which is depicted by uh, values going on increasing in the inside so you can see here 80 85 90 95 the values are increasing from the outside to the inside so when this happens in a contour map it it depicts it shows a hill for example this is a natural land photograph which has been superimposed with the contour map lines to make uh, to give you more better understanding same way a depression is vice versa the values go on decreasing from the uh, inside to the outside okay unlike the uh, hill area 
So, you can see here this is a pond or a lake or a depression. Next, we move on to uniform slope. So, when we say uniform slope, we mean the lines which are uniformly spaced. So, when the contour lines are uniformly spaced, we, we see that they are, uh, they mean that uh, the contour is having a uniform slope, again shown on a natural feature. Now, we have to understand one thing, the contour lines never close outside the map. Uh, the contour lines, sorry, may or may not close inside a map. So, uh, next feature we see is a overhanging cliff. A overhanging cliff is a very rare phenomena, uh, very in mountainous terrain we see that the contours, the contour lines are intersecting each other. Normally, the contour lines do not intersect, but in a very rare case, they may intersect and this can happen only, uh, only in the case of a uh, for a natural feature like a cliff. So, this is a natural feature cliff. Now, what is a ridge? A ridge is a uh, topography uh, depicted by a contour map uh, in a V shape. When the valleys on the inside of the V shape go on increasing, it indicates a ridge and when it, uh, the center line joining this uh, V shape indicates the ridge line as shown in this figure. Similarly, in the case of a valley which is opposite of a ridge, the contour valleys go on decreasing from the outside to the inside of the V shape. So, the, the valley is a uh, phenomena where the river normally flows from the mountainous areas. Now, saddle is upon uh, Marathi tala khind manto. So, khind or it is pass or a saddle is an area where all the values are, all four sides are covered by hilly, hilly areas and there is a, in between there is a path which is leading. Uh, you can see here the saddle is an area where the path is leading. This is the path you can see here. So, this is the path you can see, okay. So, this is a saddle in a topography. Now, one more uh, phenomena which is called as a vertical cliff. So, vertical cliff is a phenomena where the contour lines will not intersect or they intersect each other, but they will not cross each other, they will form, they will join at one common point. This can happen when the contours are having same uh, joining point, there is no horizontal distance between these lines, but there is a uh, contour interval, uh, there is a significant contour difference, 5 meter contour difference is there in the height. So, you can see this picture here, which is showing the vertical cliff. Now, plateau, plateau is another phenomenon upon Tela Marathi Masai, uh, sorry, Patar Manto. So, Patar is an area which where all the four sides is a hilly area. Uh, like a hill, the values go on increasing from the outside uh, to the inside, but at the inside there is a, a area, significant area which is flat, there are no contour values here. When there are no contour values, it indicates a flat area, which we call as a plateau. Okay. So, uh, let us reflect upon what we have learnt. Uh, so, in the adjacent figure, uh, you can see a line. So, what type of contour uh, map uh, does this line indicate? Can you all tell me? Okay. So, we will move ahead. The, we will now look at the methods of contouring. Contouring can be done by direct method or indirect method. So, what do we understand by these two classes of method? The direct method is a method where uh, we are using the method to calculate the values of the round figures of the contours like 90, we saw earlier figures like 95, 100, 105. So, those values are directly obtained. So, here two steps are required for direct contouring. One is uh, vertical control is required and horizontal control. So, what do we mean by this? We mean that uh, there should be a proper uh, control that means reference point should be there from where we start. So, in this method, the contours can be located either directly, uh, they are traced out in the field and then a, this is a very uh, tedious process and cumbersome, it is slow and uh, tedious because you, you require a lot of time is wasted in searching the point. You have to do a trial and error method. So, it is a very uh, rare case when we use this method unless you require very high accuracy. Okay. So, these are the slides representing how it is carried out. So, this is the instrument, this is a benchmark and these are the, the small, small dots indicates the points which have been specifically accurately located by direct method. Moving on, uh, we, move, we move on to the method of indirect 
contouring. So, why indirect contouring is suitable? Because the points are, uh, we form a grid uh, of squares or rectangles and then we uh, apply this method of contour, uh, contouring which is called as the indirect method. So, what do we do in the indirect method? We do not do, the, we do not calculate the uh, elevations or RLs of the required contours, but we take the values of uh, along the vertices of the grid and whatever values we get, we interpolate, we obtained, we derive or we infer or derive those values. So, there are many, many methods of interpolation, we will be seeing later on. There are the methods of squares, now you can see the square method. In this square method, this value which you see, these are the vertices, 100.8, 100.5, 100.3, these are the vertices of the grid, 100.6, 100.6, 101. So, what you see here is a these are the points along the vertices. So, 100.8, 100.4, 99.2, 99.5, 99.1, So, these are the values along the vertices of the squares or grids which we form. We divide the area of the land into squares and grids and we take the contours of this and later on we join the values uh, of the required contours. Like if you are requiring the, for example, you can see here I am requiring the now, this is a contour map which is, uh, sorry, this is, uh, okay. So, these lines which you see, now here the value is 99.65 and here it is 100.9. So, this line indicates a contour of 100. So, 100 contour is traced here. So, 100 contour is traced here, okay. You can see wherever the values are, uh, sorry, sorry, uh, this is 99 meters. So, 99 contour lies between 98.65 and 90. Uh, 9. So, when we compare the methods of contouring, we can see that the direct method is not accurate, uh, sorry, not suitable. It is expensive, but it is accurate. It is slow and tedious. It is suitable for hilly areas, whereas the calculations are not required in the case of an indirect method. No, now, we come to the last topic of contouring. What is interpolation? The process of spacing the contours proportionately is called as interpolation. So, interpolation has got different methods. You can do it by arithmetical method or you can, this is uh, what do you say? Uh, I mean, you calculate this by similar uh, triangles. Then another method is a graphical method where you will be using a graph paper to trace the points. And another method which is very popular is the estimation method. In the estimation method, what you are going to do? You are going to position the contours between the ground by estimate, you are going to use your empirical knowledge, your uh, judgmental knowledge to trace the contours. Thank you. So, next lesson we will be moving on to the second unit which is uh, theodolite surveying and traverse. This lesson will tell us uh, how that, what is a theodolite and what are, how do we measure the horizontal and vertical angles using the theodolite. Thank you.